Are you struggling with backgrounds? It's really easy to not knowing what to do, not knowing how to fill them, not knowing how to decorate them without making it feel either too repetitive or too dirty without your intention to be. Just try to make a really busy background, but also making it look natural, not forced. Today, hopefully I can help you a little bit with that and showing you the way I do it. It's something that we should always have in consideration and in our minds whenever we approach a background. And that is basically storytelling. Storytelling can be the main tool that we can use to set up a strong background. You don't have to make a whole story. You don't have to write down the whole thing unless you enjoy doing that kind of stuff. But the way I do it, it's almost random. I think about it as I go. I never really plan fully a background. I'm going to use the example that I showed a bunch of times already in my other videos, but I think it's a really good example, especially for today's video. And that is the magic store. So this background started with just a random perspective shot. I knew I wanted to do a store because it's usually filled up of stuff, so it will be easier to think. But the way I, I set it up, as I mentioned before, storytelling. How do we do storytelling? Well, you have to think yourself a lot of questions. Try to think and ask yourself as many questions as you can about this particular place. Not this scene, not the scenery. Like, uh, why do you choose this angle? That doesn't really matter. What matters with backgrounds is the story behind the background itself. So this is a store. So what kind of store is it gonna be? Previously to this piece, I did another background, which was a street shot, which had some wizards and stuff like flying around. I wanted to add a little bit of magic on this uh, background. So I did some like students almost looking gather around and some of them flying in the sky in the background. But the background was very simple. So I wanted to take that idea and elevate it on the next background, which will be this one. So I wanted to do a store where everything was magical. What kind of characters do we go to this store? Well, those students that I showed before. But what if other kinds of uh, people visit this store as well? It will be only wizards. That's why I did a witch as well on the background. I had all the other ideas later on, but on the moment I, I didn't have many ideas for the kind of customers. But going back to the idea of who this store is for, if everything is magical, then we need a lot of magical products so they can buy like ones, brooms to fly, potions maybe, or just random items. That's why some of the items on the background are unclassified. They just, you don't really know what they are. You can see some of the commercials on the background that they're related to magic. I think the, the first one, the idea was like a, an energy drink that is like, but it looks like a giant battery. I don't know. I, and the second one is like a love potion. So I did two cats with like hearts and stuff because we just have black cats and all that stuff. I just tried to make it all related to magic, even if it's subtle, because I think if it's too on the nose, I, I think it breaks the uh, how organic it might feel. It will feel more like a mockery rather than an actually world. One interesting thing about this store is like, well, who owns the store? I think that's a very important question. If you're working on a store or a, a restaurant or a cafe or whatever it is, you think about who owns it, right? Because that can add so much. The owner will make the store based on what they like. In this case, the owner of the store will be the old man on the background that is sitting. I didn't want it to make all human looking uh, people. So I decided to make it a demon because I was thinking if it's a magic world, we can have like all sorts of creatures. That's why there's a, like a dragon as well. And like that, you, you need to just think about outside the the box try to think in ways that you can not put elements but influence what elements are in the store for example in the, this is a magic store right so that influence the kind of products that we have you don't have like just random food you don't have just like things that are not related at all uh, everything is related and also everything is related to who owns the store so the style or the aesthetic that the store will have is not up to you it is up to you, but what I mean is like it's up to the character that owns the store more than you, if that makes any sense. You need to level up the storytelling skills and try to let everything on the story influence the piece. So who is this person as a cashier? They are also a demon, obviously, so they are related to this old man. So the idea behind this is like the old man owns the store, but he's too old now to operate it. So he has one of his uh, grandchildren, maybe, helping on the store. And that little by little, you 
you just add stuff like had a magazine in the middle with like a wizard uh, in the cover but it's all more simplistic again storytelling can be very 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 powerful then you can add just small details like once 30 percent off or a sign in the background showing like i think the idea of this it's hard to tell but the idea behind this is if you have an id that shows that you're a student you will have 10 percent off or whatever it is right like uh, it doesn't have to be very clear i think that's another mistake that a lot of people i, I can make a whole video about mistakes that people do when trying to do complex backgrounds because as you can see if you zoom in everything is super simple super clean but when you think about a complex background you think about doing every little detail like you will draw every small line of detail for these potions or every small detail of line for these products that we don't even want to know what they are and why but that's because they're not relevant you need to have a focal point as well but we're all just trying to think on the background <laughs> i'm not talking about the piece i'm talking about the story <laughs> the background as a story like what is the background of this background if that makes any sense to you you need to also be ambiguous for whoever is looking at this because you need to make the person wanting to explore and wanting to answer those questions i think one of the mi mistakes that a lot of people do is try to think how to fill the background without thinking about the storytelling it's like okay this is a, an apartment what do apartments have okay uh, maybe a, a couch okay maybe a tv like you're thinking in a way that you're arranging the apartment to sell it to somebody instead of making somebody already live there if that makes any sense if you arrange the apartment in a way that you're selling it it will be too clean unorganic and it, you're just making it look tidy and fill it up with whatever you can think of to to sell it instead of making somebody already live there because that person that lives there will bring all the personality around the whole place I'm like who is this guy why is he there i didn't answer that question at all it's just the idea that i have i don't have to explain that to the viewer but it makes sense it's not like it's there randomly right it's part of the story try to work on questions that will make the background organic don't add things just for the sake of it because you're gonna end up with a mess that is not easy to read you need to add things that belong there that's pretty much it for now now, if you're more interested on other tips that I have about backgrounds, because I have a lot of things about to say about backgrounds, uh, composition or other methods of filling out details, but this is the main one that I use, storytelling, and it's very, very powerful if you learn to use it correctly. So overall, I wish you all the best of luck and I hope you can improve your backgrounds and I hope this video helped you as well. If you're interested on how to draw the background itself, I would love to make more videos about it, but for now I have one video that is more aimed to beginners if working on backgrounds can be intimidating or just stressful or anything negative if you just want to get into background but you don't know how to make it enjoyable maybe this video here will be helpful for you thank you so much for watching and i will see you next time